Good morning, David. Good morning, Salim. How can risk be managed at portfolio level? Yes, we've talked about risk in projects and in an earlier video, risk in programs. Now we're going to talk about portfolios because risks mm -hmm. don't exist in isolation. Risks are often part of programs and risks uh, and um, projects and programs are often part of a portfolio. Um, so we need to think about risk management at all of these levels. Uh, in this series of videos, we're starting with the simple things, the basics at the beginning, and as we go through the series, we're working towards more complex or, and more advanced ideas. So here we've reached something which is more complex and more advanced, managing risk at a portfolio level, a portfolio of projects. Now, portfolio theory started in the 1950s, actually, uh, with the publication of a paper by a man called Harry Markovich in 1952, um, where he was thinking about how to build a portfolio of financial investments. And what he wanted to do was to understand how you could have a mix of investments where some of them were low risk, of course low risk also means low return, mm -hmm. and some of them were high, high risk with high return. And clearly you wouldn't want a, a portfolio where everything was high return because the level of, of high risk would be so high yes. that it would be unbearable. And you don't want a, a portfolio where everything is low mm. risk, but then uh, low return, risk. you don't make any, any return. So he developed a theory which he called risk efficiency, which is balancing risk and reward. So we're saying if the, uh, if the risk is low, that's a good thing, but then Returns. the level of reward is low and there's a minimum level of reward which we must make, otherwise it's not worth making the investment. Mm -hmm. So you have a, a bottom boundary on the reward side which has the good thing that r risk is low, but it's not good because we're not getting enough reward. And then obviously we want to have more reward, but the more reward you have, the more risk you have to take. So there's an upper level of risk where beyond this risk exposure, it's unacceptable. We're taking too much risk. Mm. Even though it could give us a high reward, the level of risk that we would have yeah. to take is unacceptable. Mm. So we have a, a boundary of things which are low risk, low reward, but there's a minimum level where the, the reward is too low for us to be, be interested in. And high risk, high reward, but the level of risk is so high that we don't want to take that. And the boundary between those two, Markovich called the risk efficient boundary, where we're taking the right amount of risk to give us the right amount of reward. And clearly there is a point within that boundary, which is the best possible, the optimal point, mm -hmm. where the level of risk and reward are balanced in the best possible way. We're taking not as much risk as we could, we're not making as much reward as we could, but the level of risk is acceptable and so is the level of reward. So can we say that's uh, a way of controlling your risk appetite? Yes, the risk appetite clearly will, uh, will inform where you draw the line that says mm -hmm. this level of risk is too much. Um, so that's how Markovitz developed his financial risk portfolio theory risk efficiency, and it was called the modern portfolio theory. Yes. Now, uh, in the world of project programs and portfolios, mm -hmm. we're beginning to think a little bit more about portfolio management. It's a fairly recent discipline. And people in the, in the portfolio management world of projects are looking to Markovitz and to the financial world to say, what can we learn from the way that financial portfolios are managed? Can that help us to manage portfolios of projects and programs. And this idea of Markovitz of risk efficiency is being considered now in the world of project portfolios. Um, it's fairly recent. We've only been thinking about this for maybe the last five or six years. And so the idea of risk efficiency in a project portfolio context uh, is not very widespread. Um, some organizations implement it. In a lot of organizations, industries and countries, it's, it's not considered. But it's becoming an idea which is, which is more widely understood. So the idea is that within my project portfolio, or a portfolio consists of projects and some programs and some operations and business as usual, within my project portfolio, I want a balance of risk exposures. Mm -hmm. I want some projects which are low risk, because then I can guarantee their outcome, even though the reward is quite small. I want some projects where I get a high reward, even though I know I'm going to have to take a high level of risk for that. And within that spectrum, I want to be overall risk efficient. 
so that the portfolio is not overexposed or underexposed. Mm -hmm. Overexposed means taking too much risk and we may well fail. Underexposed means that we're not taking enough risk and we may not get the right level of reward. So the portfolio manager has to have this way of assessing the riskiness of the individual components of the portfolio. Now we're beginning to talk about, as we did earlier, overall project risk exposure. Yes. So the portfolio manager has to have a consistent way of assessing the riskiness, the overall riskiness of each component in the portfolio to give us that the risk um, uh, axis of the risk efficiency boundary. We know what the expected reward is, that comes from the, the benefits and the objectives of our projects and programs, but the riskiness comes from the overall project risk exposure. Yes. And now we can plot for our portfolio the risk efficiency boundary. Yes. So risk efficiency is the core concept of risk management within portfolios, but it depends on having that consistent way of assessing the riskiness of the individual components. Yes. Now, uh, the portfolio risk can be affected, as you said, uh, by program risk and project risk yes. and other operations and other activities. Is there anything coming from top strategies, for example? Well, the, str the strategy uh, will affect the, the balance, the, the, the kind of where the risk efficient boundary is drawn. Mm -hmm. So we understand how much risk is too much risk because of the risk strategy of the organization, the risk appetite of the organization. We understand what level of reward is the minimum acceptable because of the strategy of the organization. So the strategy will set um, uh, revenue targets, profitability targets, return on investment targets, margin targets, which are the reward axis. Mm -hmm. And the organization strategy also sets the risk appetite, which is the, is the risk, uh, the boundary on the, on the too much risk axis. So those, where those points are on the boundary are informed by the overall organisational strategy. So that comes down from above and if that changes then the whole basis of the risk efficient boundary in the portfolio will change and then that will have a ripple effect into the elements of the portfolio. And then portfolio risk management is making decisions about which components of the portfolio are included or excluded. Now, you obviously don't do that on a daily basis or a weekly or monthly basis. You can't constantly be saying, actually, we won't do this project anymore and we'll add this one in because the life cycle of projects and programs is much longer than every day or every month. So we only rebalance the portfolio maybe once every year or once every two years. It's, it's not a frequent activity. The portfolio risk management happens much less often, yes. but it's a key component of understanding the health of your portfolio to be able to assess the overall riskiness of the components and put that within this risk efficiency plot of risk and reward. Let us hope that uh, this will be very uh, interesting and uh, many benefits will come from learning from what happens in the finance and which will help uh, in uh, portfolio and um, risk related to uh, programs and projects. Yes, it's certainly an area that's developing. Yeah. And you know, the exciting thing, the interesting thing about risk management is that we're always learning new things and, and having new application areas uh, where maybe five, ten years ago we didn't think about risk in these areas. Now we're realizing that risk management can contribute in a whole lot of different ways and certainly portfolio management in the project world is one of those new areas. Well, let us wait and see. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you.